So Lindsay Sterling's Till the Light Goes Out is very interesting. I would say she put a lot of effort into thinking about the song and the music video, and she actually did a pretty good job putting things together. And she admits she does the editing in a behind the scenes video that she did. Um, but it's about the five kingdoms from Daniel. And also, it's um, making God look bad. Um, so with that, I'm going to play the video and we can talk about it. Um, so just right up first, uh, Lindsay is the fifth kingdom where her four dancers represent the other four kingdoms. And this fifth kingdom is waking up in, in chaos where everybody wants something to change. They're sick of it. There's, anyways, here we go. So, in this dark man, um, I would say is a Lamanite for multiple reasons. Um, more of it will come later, but first of all, is here's this um, weapon that a lot of people like to apply to the Lamanites of the Book of Mormon. Um, I don't know how accurate that is, to be honest. I'm less inclined to think so, but I do know the culture uh, applies that to be a Lamanite weapon. And the Book of Mormon uh, prophesies that the Lamanites will wake up and that they will be um, like lions going and tearing up the wild beasts in the field, which is what this... Um, black man is doing um also the lamanites in the book of mormon there's a hebrew idiom applied to them of black skin it doesn't literally mean black skin it means that their actions are dark jeremiah himself sometimes applied that uh, to the israelites it's an idiom not literal um if it was literal why couldn't the lamanites and the nephites tell each other apart by sight, aka skin, in the Book of Mormon. But anyways, um, that looks like a Lamanite weapon. And the Book of Mormon talks about how um, Lamanites will be as lions tearing up the animals in the fields. Or, you know, warring against the Gentiles who have rejected the truth. So um, I'd have to back up just a little bit. Let's see, error. I can kind of see it there, um, but in all her wigs that Lindsay is wearing, she is wearing a white, and I would say a sick white. In fact, I would go even further in that, a leprosy white and leprosy has to do with sin and hair has to do with authority and also all her um, hairs she has braided aka twisted the hair just like the twisted authority that uh, satan has So this will come more evident later, um, but here is one of the costumes that uh, Lindsay admits is a big part of the storytelling process, and she is wearing silver around the chest and arm area, which silver is one of the four kingdoms of Daniel, and guess where it, it plays? The arms and the chest. So this um, woman in this black angel costume, 
Oops, I went too far. Sorry about that. Let's get a good picture. That, that represents God. Um, so actually, I think Lindsay got the idea from the movie Snow White and the Huntsman, which I did some expounding on. Um, also on the whole movie, scene by scene. But um, this gets into the play how Yahweh is the angel of Yahweh. And all the feathers shows that um, it's the angel. Birds represent angels. Um, I actually kind of wonder if it's the same costume <laughs> instead of another one. But uh, this shows that this battle the end times is against Yahweh and this fifth kingdom. Now, this fifth kingdom um, here is the beast with the two horns on land from the book of Revelations, dressed with the blood of saints and the gold of Saturn, aka the ancient dark sun, which is what a lot of the false worship is based upon. Um, in addition, you'll see her violin. It's been modified to look like it's part harp. A harp is symbolic of the age of the Gentiles. Now, after this fifth Beast Kingdom has started to wake up. The beat is starting to pick up faster. Now, this is a very good spot to, spot to stop. Uh, in the very background, we see something that looks like a bird. Birds represent angels or demons. Uh, this looks kind of a ghostly one. So I would say it's a demon out watching over their ritual slash ceremony that's being done in a cave, aka hidden from the world. Also, she's got a mark on her forehead. I, come on, I, I, I mean, that's a big talk today, um, but I'm sure a lot of people aren't gonna catch it. And then also look at the mark on her wrist, which are going up onto her hand. Um, that's probably the, all she could do without being too obvious about the mark on the forehead and on the hand. Also, the dresses are quite uh, interesting where these kingdoms were, uh, Satan had a hand in them. Uh, he bound them to him by his cords. Now look at the dresses on all five of the dressers and uh, dancers, including Lindsay, who represents the fifth kingdom, aka the Antichrist. They all have dresses that have cords all over them. All over. It's. I don't know how you can miss this. Oh, and here's a really good uh, of her hair. Her hair is twisted. This one's like really twisted. Um, and one movie that I do like, uh, Narnia, um, what is it, the, the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. The White Witch from the North of the Winter represents Satan. And I, I think that ought to be pretty obvious to anyone who knows their Bible and, and watches, that, watches that movie, which I actually do like. Um, but the white witch has dreadlocks for her hair and white, like leprosy, like Lindsay does here. Um, the dreadlocks and the white, like leprosy. The gold around the chest, I would say, is also has to do with Saturn, aka ancient dark sun worship.
Here he's, she's screaming as in pride instead of humbling herself. Um, and instead of being dressed in sackcloth and ashes to receive help with the upcoming battle, she's doing a ritual prayer. Ritual prayers are what heathens do. And in, in the Sermon on the Mount, or Sermon in the Temple, pinnacle of Christ's teachings, he teaches against such things. It needs to be from the heart, not vain repetitions. Here's a, a very iconic picture of the beast with two horns on the land. Um, so C in the book of Revelations has to do with dense population. And the land has to do with uh, not dense population. And here she is all by herself showing, showing it's not dense or it's much less dense than the sea. Um, also, a very good picture of the, the gold right there, um, which is part of the desires of uh, that church. Uh, here is a walking labyrinth, which is an, which is an occult uh, practice. Um, it It's a way that the occult uh, thinks that they pray to God, uh, another ritualistic item of their um, worship and prayer. Instead of having a prayer coming from the heart, they do it from going through these circles. It's also interesting that um, people who like these things admit that it turns off your logical brain so you can't think about things. And one thing about uh, occult meditation is they want you to forget things and to swipe your mind clean. And the problem with that is when you do such activities, it makes it easier for demons to convince you that evil is good and good is evil. Where biblical meditation is thinking upon the words of God, not trying to get rid of uh, that shield and guard from your mind. Uh, also, here comes a black mist, um, which we'll see more of later, but it's basically the wave of righteousness coming. This one, we'll see that it's the warning shot of an arrow. And arrows represent Torah, a.k.a. the law. There's the arrow as a warning shot telling the flying kingdoms here, I am coming to restore my law. Lindsay, the fifth kingdom, picks it up and looks at it. And while she's looking at it, you can see that she has a ring of power on her finger with the two horns on it, uh, along with the dress of all the cords that bind them to Satan, along with her dreadlock twisted leprosy white hair. Here's the, the beast on the land with the two horns, the violin that's been modified to look like a harp, which is symbolic of the age of the Gentiles. Oh, oh I can't go back a little, just a tiny bit. Wait. There's the wave of righteousness. Yeah, it's dark, but this is a Gnostic uh, video, so it's gonna flip things some 
Um, so yeah, this is the wave of righteousness or the wave of the few who are going to be keeping Torah, the law. The beast, yet again. So now, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the big statue and, and the five different parts. The first part is the head. And here is Lindsay focusing on the head as they're coming in uh, into the cave to do their, ri their ritual for prayer instead of humbling themselves. So after the kingdom of head, um, is shown, uh, they do some dancing, as in that kingdom had some time. There's more righteousness coming. Now, there's a focus on the chest and the arms. As you saw, they just hold a knot on the arm. She's going to catch the staff authority with the arm. Now they're going to do some more dancing because that kingdom's going to have some time on earth for a bit in history. Now, uh, as you saw the sword, that has to do with the waist, the bronze, the third kingdom. Um, they get a, a little bit of time to dance and, you know, have their time in history. We're going to get a little bit of that. There's more uh, ways to the bronze shield right there. Now, uh, uh, let me just go back a little bit. Right. To me, this looks like a focus on the legs, um, which is um, the fourth kingdom. And then right after that, the mist of righteousness gets really strong on them. And then they battle, which is a big deal about the fifth kingdom is the final battle. Now, here's that Lamanite again. Um, he's got pointed ears. Uh, I think it's partly because the focus of him listening to his master, uh, Yahweh, God. It's a battle. Now, uh, we'll see it more prevalent in other areas, but look how his ear is pierced. Now, in the Tanakh, uh, a.k.a. the Old Testament, when, um, oh, I can't think of the word right now. My mind went a little blank. When a servant, um, when their time was up to leave their master, and, they, and if they decided to stay with their master, part of the ceremony that went around along with that was the piercing of the ears and you'll see every one of these um, dark looking warriors have their ears pierced representing that they are bound and listening to Yahweh their master see, this one's even a lot more prevalent right there And all three of these characters are dark, which I would say goes along with the idea of Lamanites. On top of that, um, most of the dancers are white, or white, more whitish, anyways. There's the um, weapon that is a lot of people would call a Lamanite weapon from the Book of Mormon which goes along with how um, the prophecy, how they will be 
like lions, um, taking care of the wild beasts of the field, wild, aka not following the law. There is Yahweh, God, with his crown. Um, I'm not sure what the picture on the head is. The blue all over the face can be the water of the earth and the, the gold could be the land. I, I'm not completely sure on that, to be honest. Um, anyways. The five kingdoms. Now, this is um, one of the Lamanites warring like a lion. The beast with the two horns clothed in the blood of the saints. Uh, they're just going about to go battle. Now, if you saw, um, Yahweh, God, the one of the eyes was slightly distorted. Um, and that is a common thing in movies for a uh, Messiah. We are doing a ritual prayer like the heathens. Instead of getting down in, in sackcloth, and ashes in true repentance to receive their protection of Yahweh from our enemies. Fighting. The sword, the word of God. I, let me go back a little bit. I find it interesting. They're patting their heart. Their wicked, wicked heart. Now look at that. Yahweh protected those who depended upon their shield of faith. The fifth kingdom, Lindsay, is trying to hurt Yahweh, and it just did nothing. It just blocked it. Fifth kingdom is wounded, uh, just as in prophecy. I also kind of wonder if this was somewhat personal, that if she thinks God has hurt her instead of helped her. And I'll get more on that in just a minute. See, there was the eye again, the focus between the two. One of her friends, aka Kingdoms, was wounded, destroyed. She takes the law that God gave us and is going to throw it back at God. Now, this part's interesting, though. She's modifying it. She's going to modify it with a flash of light, like lightning, like Satan. Working up to it. Boom, flash of light. She shoots it off with the double helix. Now, I don't know why yet, but the, this double helix is part of the symbolism of Satan. The fifth kingdom, the one on land with the two horns. 
It's got Yahweh in the, in the bowels. Lindsay doesn't believe in the atonement. The reason why God's bowels are full of mercy is because of the atonement. And here, Lindsay is saying it's Yahweh's bowels are empty. They're hollow. She doesn't believe in the atonement of Yeshua, our promised Messiah, to give us peace. Now, if you doubt that this lady clothed with feathers is God, who in the Old Testament went by clouds, a pillar of clouds in the day and a pillar of fire at night, it was Yahweh. God did that. And here, is who she is representing God when she supposedly defeats him of a pillar of fire going up in the dark to the clouds. And here's the um, fifth kingdom with the, the two horns watching what she has done. mark on the forehead <sighs> wonderful picture the beast with the two horns on the land clothed with the blood of the saints the gold representing Saturn the ancient dark sun false worship with the violin modified to look like a harp, which is symbolic of the age of the Gentiles. All the chords that bind them. One last look of the Walking Labyrinth, which is an occult practice. Now, this part could have been accident, but uh, the two hills, one higher than the other. Um, anyways. That's my um, thoughts about her video.